Today I want to explore a cool concept of animating with a background node without using any keyframes. I'm talking about fully retimable animations that always fit the duration of your clip. While you might not use this exact feature, we will talk about some really cool DaVinci Resolve Fusion stuff and have some fun along the way. So animating with a background node, yes it is possible and it has everything that we might want. We can change the length of the clip, change the timings of the animations, and even add in easing. I first thought about this after watching William Justice's video on the Pro Modifier and I thought it'd be really funny to build an animation system using it. Check out his video after for more ways that you can use the Pro Modifier. Before we discuss that, let's add in a background node, view it off to the side, and get this all set up. The first thing I want to do is rename this node using F2 on my keyboard, and we just want to call this Animation Map, that way it's easy to find later on. Then in the background node, I want to set this type to be gradient instead of solid. Now when you set up the gradient, think of those black areas as a starting point and the white areas as the resting point. Then in between is where that animation actually happens. So knowing that, let's grab this white point and bring it down. So we'll have a animation right here at the beginning, and then let's add in another point, and then finally another one so you can just click to add in these different points come down to the color and bring this last one to be black. So essentially we've programmed it to have an animation at the beginning, hold that value until the end, and then animate off once it reaches the end. Let's say that we want to apply this animation to some text, so animating the size. If we're animating the size property, the first thing I want to do is right click, modify with, and do anim curves. This is going to add on the anim curves modifier if we switch to the modifiers tab. And I know this isn't the pro modifier, but I want to add this one right away so that way we don't have to come back and redo everything later. Once that's been added, let's switch the source from transition to custom. This is going to add in this input slider. On this input slider, we want to right click, do modify with, and now we will add the pro modifier. Inside the pro modifier, there's this image to pro box. We want to grab our animation map and just drag it right into that box. So now that pro modifier is going to be referencing our animation map or that, that background with the gradient. Let's have the gradient off to the side so we can see what's happening. In the pro modifier, if we move this position around, you can see nothing is going to happen while it remains on the white. But as soon as I bring it to one of the edges, it's going to scale down as it reaches the black. We'll be able to change the actual values of the scale later, but essentially what we need it to do is start all the way on the left and then just move off to the side like this, come all the way to the end, and then continue going so it animates off. In the pro modifier, we have the different channel select, so we can do red, green, blue, alpha, and luminance. In this case, you can do any of them except for the alpha value because it is there's no transparency in our gradient. But depending on your image, you could change it so it works on just the red channel or just the blue channel to get some different results. We can just leave it on red because if we come back to the animation map and click on the white, you can see the red channel is all the way up at 1. And then on the black color, it is down at 0. Back in the Pro modifier, since we want to do this without any keyframes, we need to somehow make it automatically go from the left side of the screen all the way to the right side of the screen. The way we're going to do that is using an expression so that way it always travels across the screen over the duration of the composition. I'll have this down in the description in case you just want to copy and paste it. On the position value, we can right click to expression and I only want this to affect the X value, so that's this first 0.5. The first thing that I want to reference is the time, and what this is going to do is grab the current frame of the composition. So this is way too big, because when I'm at frame 74, the position is at 74, which is 74 times farther away from the composition that it needs to be. So what we're going to do is divide this by comp.renderEnd. That's going to take this 119 value, or however long the composition is, and as a result, it's going to return a value between 0 and 1. So when we're at the beginning, it's going to be 0, and then at the end, it's going to reach 1. Now, this works great in this case, and if I come back to the edit page and make this longer, it is always going to animate off right at the end. You can see the animation is already happening. The issue with this system is if we drag this over and extend it from the beginning. You can see nothing is going to animate over here, and instead the animation is still going to be exactly the same as it was before. If we go into Fusion, that's because we're working with negative numbers. So to fix this, we just need to add a few different things to our expression. So the first thing is time. We want to offset this by the start. So if I add a opening parenthesis, go to the end of time, do negative comp.render start, and then add in a closing parenthesis, this is going to get us closer. It's going to start at zero, but now it's going to end way too soon because the animation isn't long enough. So we need to do the same thing to the end. So if I add a opening parenthesis and come to the end and do minus comp.render start, now it's always going to update it. So at the beginning, even if it's a negative value, it's going to animate on, and then at the end, it's going to animate off. Again, I have that expression down in the description, so if you just want to copy and paste it, it's going to work in any comp, and that way it's a little bit easier to see as well. But now that we have that done, we can hit play, it's going to animate on, and then at the very end, it is going to animate back off. 
So now there's two main things that we need to address, the easing and the customization. That is where the anim curves modifier is gonna come in. Anim curves is gonna be driven by whatever comes into this input value. So it's gonna take that value, it's gonna modify it in some way, and then it's gonna output it to our size control. By default, the curve is set to linear. We can change this down to be easing or custom. So if I do easing, it's gonna add two more drop down menus. So I can change this to something like quad and expo. So I can add easing on both the ease in and the ease out. There's a really nice website linked down below that visualizes all of these different easing functions. Now when we hit play, it's going to seem a lot smoother. You can also come to the easing, come down to custom, and add in your own easing curve. And all of the same spline controls work here, so you can do control A to select all the points, press F on your keyboard, and T to open up this easing control. So you can just drag these points back and forth to create a really nice curve uh, that is totally custom and works really well. That looks really good, so I'm just going to leave it on that for now. Now for customization, if we come down, we have the scale and offset. The offset control is where the animation is going to start from, and then the scale is what is added to the offset over the animation. So if I hit play right now, it's going to scale up even bigger. So changing those, I can just make a slight animation, or if I make the scale negative, I can actually have it scale down during the animation. But usually I like to have the offset at zero and then bring the scale up to the resting size. And now I just have a very simple animation. One more thing to mention before we can call this finished. Since the pro modifier is scanning the background node, looking at all the individual pixels, the resolution does actually make a difference in the animation. If we go to the image tab, let's set this up so it's as efficient as possible and you do not need to worry about it breaking. First, let's turn off auto resolution and we can bring this height all the way down to two. Since it's just scanning across the side, it really only needs the one pixel. Two is the lowest that we can set it to. Then the width only needs to be as long as the composition. And to show you the issue with that, if I bring this down to something lower than our composition, like 50, 30, somewhere in that range. When I hit play, there's gonna be visible steps in the animation because it doesn't have enough information to work with. To fix this, we can use another expression. If we right click on the width, we can do expression and we just wanna do comp.render end and then minus comp.render start. So that way, even if it has a negative number, it's gonna to work totally fine. Now there's a pixel for each frame in our composition. So when I hit play, we're gonna have a smooth animation once again. Now, a lot of the time you can just get away with a project resolution, but this way it's as optimized as possible and you will not ever run into an issue. Now under the color tab, all I need to do is move these points around and we can customize the animation. So if I want something really long, I can drag those points out and now it's a long, smooth animation, or I can make it really fast or just one of them really fast and the other one take a long time. You can even come in and add different points. So if you wanted to make a kind of wobble animation, you could bring this one down to mid gray. And when you hit play, it's going to animate on, animate down a little bit, and then come back up. It can get a little funky if you do too many of those. It's a lot of fun to play with, and maybe you want to make your own little preset so you can fit this into your workflow. If you're actually looking for a really good animation system so you don't need to use keyframes, check out my anim engine in the editor collection and editor titles packs. There are so many good tools all built from the ground up to save you time, so learn more about those linked down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of fun video, and if you have any questions, please let me know.